Welcome artists to a pastel painting tutorial here in Monet Cafe Studio. I'm calling this one Honey Bee Magic. In this lesson, we'll be painting a glorious field of purple blooms and I'll give you some easy tips for painting a honey bee. And let's talk about these supplies. I have a variety of pastel brands and I'll talk a little bit more about them as I paint. But this is my basic palette that I started out with. I knew I had some purple flowers, some greens in the grasses, pretty colors of turquoise in the sky. I am going to be using water to create a wet underpainting. I'll show you that in a minute. I also used some of these gorgeous J. Luda pastels for some of the warm colors in the honeybee. And I also used some of the beautiful J. Luda purples from my newly curated set on the J. Luda Pastel Company's website. It's called Pretty in Purple. It's been wonderful to work with J. Luda Pastels to create this lovely set. And if you want to check it out, I'll have a link in this video description and be sure to use the coupon code SJ10 for a discount. And by the way, if you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, your version will receive extra goodies. One of those goodies being my color notes and many of the color numbers I used for this lesson. The surface I'm using is one that I love for pastel painting. It's called Pastel Matte. It's really kind of like a magical surface because it takes so many layers of soft pastels, but it's also water friendly and you can add wet uh, mediums as well and even water as you'll see me do in this tutorial. It comes in multiple colors, but I'm using a sheet of white, and it's actually the same sheet that I used for my two previous tutorials, one of this lovely hummingbird where I used iridescent colors, and the other tutorial of these beautiful stars where I teach you how to create stars with a toothbrush. It sounds crazy, but it works. The reference image is from unsplash.com. It's a great site for copyright free reference images. I'll have the link for this image in the description of this video, but I did crop it. And if you're a patron of mine, again, you will get some extra goodies, including this cropped image. Let me take a quick break and tell you how to become a patron. Become a patron on my Patreon page. It's only $5 a month. You can cancel at any time. You unlock hundreds of lessons with extra commentary, extra content. And I love the fact that I can see your work and it's just a great group of people. I am selling individual lessons on my Patreon page. So if you're just one of those people who don't like to subscribe, you can buy lessons individually. Now, while I have you here, would you please like this video? It really does help uh, YouTube to share this video and subscribe and leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. The painting area is five inches by five inches and I need to get in a general sketch. So as you can see, I'm just using a little Prismacolor New Pastel. It's just kind of a mossy green. I wanted to start with a loose sketch because there are some things you really do need to get right with this. And one of them is the bee. I liked the position of the bee in my cropped image. And I also liked how he seemed to be hugging this flower. Maybe I should call this flower hugger. So I'm not getting crazy over where everything is, but I like the composition. So I'm just gently sketching in um, some of the elements. I loved these purple flowers and it will give me a nice guide to get started. This portion is obviously sped up, but you can always slow it down on YouTube by looking for the gear icon in the lower right hand side of the video. I'm starting with an underpainting using Prismacolor New Pastels. You could see the color number of the first one, but this one, that's a little hard. 336P maybe and 346P or R. Um, but I do add two other colors to this, an orange for the um, uh, upper middle ground and a yellow for the sky. Now, if you're new to pastel painting or painting in general, you may be thinking at this point, what on earth are you doing? Those colors are not in that reference image, but there are a lot of cool colors in the reference image. The greens and even the purples um, are cooler than the colors I'm laying down now. And when you create an underpainting with warm colors for many landscape paintings, it really brings your painting to life. And it is just a really neat way to start a painting. So I'm using these colors, the dark one here. Uh, you can see that the flowers are probably some of the darkest things in this image. The sky is the lightest. So I often use a yellow when I'm doing an underpainting like this. And this orange is a nice middle value to put down in the distant 
uh, middle ground, you could say. Now I started using a brush that, I'm just using water by the way. This brush was a little too floppy, so I switched here to a, a stiffer bristle brush. And you can see it's literally liquefying the soft pastels, covering up a lot of that white. I don't often love working on white unless I'm doing something like this, where I'm toning it to a color of choice and it makes it very luminous and bright. So I just liquefied the pastels and turned them into paint. And now after it dries, I'm ready to start. This portion here is substantially sped up. Again, on my Patreon page, it's much slower, but I'm gonna slow things down here on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel when I get to painting the bee. I'm gonna talk you through it. So I got some darks. You can see in the reference image, distant trees or mountains, whatever they are, are pretty dark. I am gonna lighten it up a bit. Now I'm adding some colors to the sky. The lavender that pretty turquoise color they're kind of of the same value so they blended well and a little bit of light above the tree line now i'm getting in my middle grasses with some warmer greens and now some cooler greens i loved this color and now time for these flowers now this is pretty standard for pastel painting or how i teach is layering dark to light we start with the darker values i always like to say Think of the shadowy, deeper parts of the flower and use those values and colors. Then, as you can see here, you gradually start to layer on top and lighten the values, getting finally to your final layers of uh, your lightest values. So resist the urge to go for what you see in the reference images, some of those really light colors. And uh, see, now I'm adding a bit more of the magenta, a little bit of pink. I saw some hints of pink in these flowers. Um, and my final image ends up a little bit more purple, purple blue than the reference image, which is the pink. Now these are the J. Luda pastels. It's from my Pretty in Purple set. It's a gorgeous set of purples from J. Luda Pastels that I curated, and it's now available. I'll have the link in the description of the video. Make sure you use the coupon code SJ10 for a discount. All right, you can see these values getting lighter. This is a packing peanut. It's what comes in your packages to protect protect them and I just used it to blend. I'm turning it um, when I go to different colors or values and uh, it, it worked great to blend things. Now I'm getting a little more green in some areas and now finally to get to some of those even lighter highlights. I loved this periwinkle blue and I'm just popping some of that on the tips and uh, most of the light seems like it's coming uh, kind of from the top. You can see on the top of the bee, um, his head and his wing. There's a little backlighting too. I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit to show you that pretty uh, cool blue-green color that I used in some of the grasses. It was the perfect color to lighten some of the distant, I'm imagining them as mountains in the background, and uh, used my packing peanut again to blend. I think I even lighten them up a little bit more in a minute. And now even getting more really light highlights and some more of the pretty uh, lavender colors. I wanted to point out that you can see I obviously have left the bee kind of unfinished. I just have that beautiful underpainting color of those pinks and I don't want to totally cover that up. Um, it's just going to keep a nice luminous feel to this bee. So the bee is primarily two sections, his head and his abdomen abdomen <laughs> and um, I really wanted to capture that gesture of him curving around so I have this is a Terry Ludwig pastel it's an eggplant color it looks black but I wanted to go ahead I know underneath the bee is going to have some shadows and now I'm going to layer I'm seeing some rusty colors these are J. Luda pastels when you see these that are kind of large and rectangular um, and especially if they have an embossed number like these on them those are J. Luda pastels Terry Ludwig's are also rectangular like this um, but J. Luda's have their number embossed on it so you see I added a rusty color and now I thought I wanted to get a little hint of maybe a little bit more of that reddish rusty color in there. And I thought this beautiful, cool red would be nice just to pop in there. It's similar to the color that I used in the background. And uh, I wanted to make sure I kind of kept a little bit of that in the bee. And it is very hard guys to use these big pastels on such a little subject, but I basically feel my way. I do a little tap, tap, tap where I can feel where the pastel is. And then I make my mark. I can't even see what I'm doing here just like you guys can't, um, but this orange color was great to add a little bit into the head portion. And 
I'm just doing some stripes in there. And now this is a gorgeous golden color, 15L, I believe, another J. Luda pastel. And I'm using the little corner of it just to get some little yellow highlights for those little stripe areas. And I'm trying not to cover up all of the colors I've put down before. This is again, just like I said with the flowers, it's a process of layering. Now, I um, there's a little segmented area there between the head and the body that I needed to fill in some background to uh, kind of separate that and an area where I'm gonna be putting the wing. I used my little packing peanut to blend and um, now I'm getting a little bit more dark underneath. I'll be adding the wing and the feet in just a bit, but now I wanna show you some of the colors that I'm using to lighten things up even more. These are some of the pinks, magentas, and that little pretty periwinkle uh, color. And also I'm going to lighten up the grasses. I'm using a Prismacolor New Pastel and two other lighter, brighter greens. This one's a little more neutral. So I'm just, again, doing some negative painting, carving a little bit, making little marks that feel like grasses and things in the distance. Also notice how much uh, layering you can get on this pastel mat. It's really a great surface so this is a just a I don't know what remnant of what brand pastel it is but it's a pretty bright yellowy green and um, giving a little bit of a hint of perhaps some little uh, wispy grasses growing up and creating some texture and finally, the Prismacolor New Pastel. These are harder, um, they're long and skinny, and they make nice little grassy marks, but I didn't wanna overdo it. Just a few to suggest some height. Uh, back to that pretty um, turquoise color again. I felt like I still wanted to lighten up that distant tree line mountain, whatever it is, in the uh, background, uh, because I thought it would uh, give more focal interest to the foreground that had the darker values. And I, I was happy with that decision. I felt like I wanted to get some more of that pretty pink just for some pizzazz in these flowers. So just carving it in little spaces within the flowers. And I thought it did bring it to life. And it really caused those foreground flowers to feel closer. Warm colors come forward. Cool colors usually feel like they're further away. So that pink worked great for that. Now this is, I believe, another Mount Vision pastel. Again, I felt like some of these could be a little lighter with a little bit more detail to bring those more into focus and emphasize some of the flowers a bit more. Now, pretty much the rest of this is just me working more on these flowers. You'll see me adding a little bit more of the purplish, leaning a little warmer. Also still lightening some of the highlights on the flowers. That uh, little purplish pink uh, was also warm. Now this is back to that cool kind of periwinkle color. And here I'm carving a little bit more of that lavender I had used originally on the sky. Um, negatively into some of these flowers to make them stand out a bit more. I also realized I wanted my um, my flowers on the left side were kind of jammed into the, the border of the painting. So I decided just to add more color to the left side um, to make my painting a little bit wider. And as you can see in the reference image, they're not crammed against the left um, side of the painting. So fortunately, I had enough room to do that and I liked the composition better. I'm adding a little bit more of that backlighting to the bee with this very light, pretty J. Luda pastel. Very gently, just giving a little bit of sunshine to the top of the bee and a little bit to his back. And now I'm making the wing. I'm first adding this periwinkle color almost like the highlight of the wing um, that's catching the light. And now I'm using this uh, Terry Ludwig, it may be the eggplant color. I don't want to press too hard because I don't want this wing to feel stiff. I just added a little shadow underneath that wing. Now, this is a little teeny Terry Ludwig pastel, little chunk, I should say, and I'm using it just to create a little bit more highlight where the sun might be catching on the top of that wing. There you go. I missed the footage for creating the legs, but here in this image, you can see that they are just some little marks um, segmented to look like he's hugging the flower. And here is the final, a fun, bright, and cheery painting. I hope you learned lots. I hope you try it. And if you're not a patron, I'd love for you to come join our beautiful family. All right, everyone, as always, God bless and happy painting.